Hello everyone, my name is Pixorifs, and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you guys are having a good day. I hope you're having a better day than this creeper is. He's stuck in a box right now, and it's kind of adorable observing him just kind of chilling in the in that cube. So, as you can see, I am over here at a stronghold. This is actually a brand new stronghold that I found a few thousand blocks out in the world because I was looking for this mossy stone brick. And of course, some of the mossy stone brick around here is potentially going to be silverfish infested mossy stone brick, but that's fine. I have a silk touch pickaxe. I'm gathering a fair amount of it. The reason being, I'm on a kind of a mission to collect a bunch of materials that I have in short supply over at the museum. Basically, I want to be able to put all of these on display, but I also want to be able to build with each of them. And if we're going to do an exhibit about various blocks like mossy cobblestone, I maybe also want to start including mossy cobblestone in the walls. Likewise, mossy stone brick and various other variants of stone brick. It's kind of nice to have them in larger quantities. And so I was thinking, taking apart a stronghold, while it's kind of fun, kind of feels like we are just wrecking a natural part of the Minecraft environment and it's always nice to have a way to reproduce blocks like this renewably. So what I was thinking was today we would start on a different kind of project. We're going to do a vine farm and a lot of the time you won't really need a vine farm for a whole lot but just on the occasion that you need something like this, this is also going to be a fairly adaptable farm design that you can use to get hold of a whole bunch of of other materials. And now we've broken out of the stronghold, but while we're in the neighborhood, I thought I would stop by these nearby frozen ocean icebergs and pick up a few other things we're going to need for the farm. In particular, blue or packed ice is going to work best for this. We're going to need something that we can glide over during the farming process because the process of farming vines is actually kind of specific. So while vines can be found abundantly in some places of the world, particularly in swamps or jungles, harvesting them manually like this has always felt like a little bit of a pain. You can only harvest them with shears in Minecraft Java Edition. They are too delicate to be blown up and gathered using TNT. Even silk touch tools cannot actually drop the vines. They won't actually collect the vines themselves, although on Bedrock Edition, according to the Minecraft Wiki, which is something I did not know before, you can actually silk touch vines using an axe. So Bedrock Edition has a bit of an advantage over Java here in that you guys can use a tool that has potentially a lot more durability than the average set of shears. My netherite axe here, for example, has Unbreaking 3 and 2000 durability. So that's going to be able to harvest about, you know, 8000 vines, roughly speaking, whereas shears, of course, have a durability of 238. So, advantage bedrock. But I think what we can do here is set up something that relies on the durability of shears and allows you to replace shears as you go. But we want to make the process a little bit more AFKable than just walking around a swamp or a jungle and collecting the vines by hand. We also need to have a farm that takes the vines' speed of growth into account. Vines will actually grow fairly slowly. It takes a little while based on random tick speed events for the uh, vines to grow one block downwards from their current position. They can also choose to grow sideways along blocks, but we need to set up a situation in which the only way they can grow is down just so they don't spend their random ticks you know, growing outwards along whatever surface they're planted on. But you can't bone meal vines or do anything really to increase their rate of growth. I'm not even certain that they used to be able to be zero ticked. Maybe you could, but of course all of the zero ticking growth bugs have been patched as of the current version of Minecraft, so we can't really do anything about that. Instead, we are going to have to rely on good old-fashioned natural growth, which means building a farm large enough that once we do one circuit of it, some of the vines at the beginning have started to grow back. And as you might have guessed from the location, I'm actually going to build the farm over here in Old Town. It's close enough to my iron farm that I'll be able to get a renewable supply of shears. We've already got a fair amount of iron that we can do stuff like that with already. I think I might actually use some of the regular stone bricks I've gathered in the process of taking apart that stronghold to create this farm. And we're not really going to need too many supplies. It's actually going to be a fairly low-fi farm. What I do need for it, though, is a little bit of space. So I'm going to take down a few of these trees. Now that I've harvested most of the vines from them, we should be able to take these down and flatten out an area where we can build up a pretty solid-sized vine farm. 
So I've started to flatten out the space here, we can expand it a little bit more if we need to, and I've laid down the shulker boxes of materials that I gathered on my trip to the stronghold, plus the ice and a couple of other bits and pieces here, we're probably going to use these for storage as well. And I've worn down the shears to the amount of durability where, give or take a couple of vines, we have one durability left, meaning that any vines I've gathered with those shears so far are not going to be enough once we regrow all of them to break a single set of shears. And this is quite important because the mechanism we're going to be using to make sure we get refills of shears every time we go around the system can actually preserve these shears if you want to add mending to them, for example, or you know anything that means you want to preserve the shears instead of having tools break. Now this whole thing, by the way, before we get any further, is loosely based on Nembon's design for an ice farm. So I'm using some of the same mechanics of player transport and uh, you know how the the whole farm is set up and I've seen these in a variety of people's videos and thought I would adapt that design for an iron farm so once again shout out to Nembon for being a pillar of the Minecraft technical community so what we're going to be doing here is setting up a bunch of rows of water channels that the player will move around and then above those we're going to set up areas where the vines are going to be growing downwards into the player's line of sight and as you get moved around automatically by the water streams you're going to hold down both left click and right click at the same time with some food in the offhand in order to shear stuff and make sure that your hunger is refilled as you go so that you don't end up taking starvation damage. We're going to make a channel fairly long over here and I've actually tried to connect this up to the system of paths that I made through Old Town in the first place. Our first bucket of water is going to go here. We're going to let it flow five blocks, so one, two, three, four, five, and then here, right there, is where we're going to lay down our first piece of blue ice. We're actually going to break down some of the oak wood that I've gotten from the surrounding swamp trees and place a pressure plate on there, which is going to block the water, but still allow the player to just kind of glide across. You could obviously block it with a sign and stuff as well, but the idea is that once we take our depth strider boots off, the water is just going to propel us along this channel. We're going to be able to go over this patch of blue ice. Uh, packed ice will also work. It doesn't have to be blue, but I'm going to use blue ice anyway. And then well, we get caught up in the next water stream and continue to be propelled along the contraption. And so what we want is a series of water channels five blocks long and then after five blocks we're going to place another piece of blue ice, another pressure plate and repeat that pattern a couple of times. At the end here we're actually going to make a little C shape and then wrap around to another channel basically one block apart from our first one here and this is going to allow water to flow around. We're going to have a blue ice block right there, basically have it directly opposite the first one here and we'll place a couple more blue ice blocks along here as well we'll have one there at the end of this channel and this is going to allow us to continue the same water channel until we get to here and then once again we're going to have another c-shaped section and it's going to double back around on itself again and the sheep will not be allowed inside the finished farm so <laughs> roam around here while you can now it turns out i'd miscalculated that just a little bit we wanted each of these segments to be five blocks long that one there was only four blocks because of basing it on this but no this should all be fine the idea is that we're going to have 16 block rows of vines along here so 16 vines per section and then once you loop around to the next one another 16 vines there and while that doesn't divide perfectly into the amount of durability these shears have it does allow us to track things in stacks so potentially four segments of this farm is going to result in a stack of vines and the shears with 238 durability will be able to harvest maybe like between 14 and 15 of these segments of 16 vines before they break and we kind of want to preserve them just on the off chance that you would prefer your shears not to break i'm gonna include that in the design of the farm. You could also potentially enchant shears with mending and even unbreaking to make the farm go a little bit longer and be able to repair the shears at the end of it. So if you want to work that into your version of this design, go right ahead. But from this point on, building up the farm is just a matter of repetition and getting the sheep out of the way so that you can actually work on it. So all we need to do is copy the same positions for each of the pieces of blue ice and the walls all the way down and we should eventually have a series of twists and turns that leads to an end point that's going to wrap back around and connect back up with this. And when we're done building all of that up, it's just going to look like this. It's actually a fairly straightforward design. We have 14 rows of these middle blocks. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And since the player is going to be facing this way at all times in the farm, we don't really need to worry too much about what's going to happen 
on the outsides of the farm. What we're focused on is the player looking in this direction and farming all of the vines just by holding down left click with a pair of shears in the main hand. And so as we move around this, the entire thing is now laid out with these blue ice pressure plates so that without the depth strider boots on, you should be able to glide around it no problem. If you put depth strider on though, it significantly slows you down thanks to the fact that the player is supposed to have more control and the water is supposed to push you around a little bit less and you actually come to a stop on the pressure plates without gliding over. So remove your depth strider boots if you want to use this farm design. Now the next thing we're going to be doing is setting up these long bars of uh, material for the vines to grow down from and in this case we're going to have them two blocks above the water streams here we're not really going to need too much height because we're not looking for length of the vines we're making sure that they will just grow back one block underneath them each time and there isn't really a whole lot we can do to influence that right now so we're going to be putting bars of material in here this one will be longer once it's connected up but the rest of them are all just going to connect up in the same way and i might actually use some of the mossy stone brick i got from the stronghold to make these because it's going to look good with the vines and let's face it we're going to be getting a lot more mossy material material pretty soon anyway. So each of these rows of blocks is going to end up 16 blocks long because that's how long this section is before it hits the curve here and obviously we don't want any vines dangling down in front of the player because that's going to slow you down. Walking through vines does actually end up slowing you down and we just end up cutting them with the shears anyway. So we want to <laughs> pillar up a couple of times here and place these long 16 block bars of material over the top of each of these stone sections. And three and a bit stacks later, we have these alternating rows of mossy stone brick, which uh, just kind of stick out one block on each end. So they sort of alternate, but 16 blocks, one block offset from each other, going all the way down the length of the farm. And from here is where we start placing the vines. Obviously, these are going to have to wait a little while to grow, but they will actually grow on opposite sides of these channels here, making it possible to grow vines two blocks deep in a one block space pretty much which is kind of useful for this farm because even if the vines haven't grown fully by the time you make another circuit around you'll be able to hit the vines on the back row where previously you were hitting the vines on the front and once again the reason i've gone with 14 rows instead of the full 15 is because the shears only have a limited amount of durability and will potentially end up breaking at that stage not to mention the fact that when you slow down as you go over the ice blocks here, you'll actually hit both vines on this section because the player is traveling slow enough that you can shear two vines in the same section. So you'll actually end up using up more durability than you think you will, and potentially the shears can break a little early. Now, obviously at this point, we're using up all the vines that I gathered from the swamp earlier, just so that we can set the farm up a little bit faster, because we'll be gathering vines again in no time. Some of them have already started to grow here, which is a good sign, and potentially we're gonna do a full run of this farm a little bit later to test the whole thing out and see how well it works. This, by the way, is also a fairly clear sign that we'll need to put some perimeter walls around the outside of this to mob proof it if you're going to go AFK because chances are mobs are going to spawn here in the swamp at night and they're going to have a riot of a time trying to get to you whilst you're moving around the farm but eventually something's going to get to you a creeper's going to blow up or something you'll need to make sure this area is mob proof so now all of the vines are in the farm and they're starting to grow it's going to look a little bit confusing because of all of the vines growing down and all of the greenery behind but we'll set up a nice surrounding uh building for this a little bit later what we want to look at now is how effectively this is going to work. So once again, I'm holding left click and right click at the same time with food in my off hand and the shears in my main hand. And so if I stand in this water channel, look directly in front of me and hold down both buttons, you'll notice I'm actually shearing some stuff that's a little bit further away thanks to the fact that the vines in front of it have not grown. And now we can actually shear a whole bunch of this stuff and collect it as we go around. We'll also find that a couple of these vines that we're shearing at a distance are going to drop into the water channels and they will just make their way around the system, eventually ending up at the terminus on the far side here, which is eventually going to wrap back around. But my idea is that either the items will be traveling faster than the player and they'll end up in the player's inventory naturally, or we can set up some sort of collection mechanism for those. 
But as you can see, occasionally we are collecting some of the vines that end up landing on the stone bricks here because there isn't enough distance that they're just going to sit there. They're always going to be drawn in towards the player. And the Wandering Trader is potentially going to be a problem here, but we'll deal with him in a second. I wonder if he's going to trade us some vines after we've just set up a, a vine farm. That would seem pretty typical. But if all of the vines were grown into the farm at this point, we'd be collecting vines on every single block as we went around. And obviously, once the vines start to grow back, Back, we'll see a renewed yield the second time we walk through the farm. All right, let's pop up here and see what you're selling. What? Of course, <laughs> he's he's selling vines. It's so perfect. But as you can see, I've already gathered a few in my inventory. And as we go towards the end of the farm here, I'm going to skip the last few rows. There are a bunch of vines here waiting for us to collect. There we go. We got a few extra vines from that. I think we got nine extra from that. So uh, one, go through this farm, even without the whole thing being fully grown. We're just collecting vines here and there, but we end up with about half a stack. And so one run through this farm is going to get us a few stacks of vines at a time. Now, of course, we need to work on the mechanism wrapping around here and depositing shears in a collection mechanism that we can easily retrieve them and make sure that we have a fresh set of shears for the next go around the farm, at which point, hopefully, a significant portion of these vines would have grown again. And if we wanted to guarantee that the vines had all regrown by the time we wrapped back around here, that might actually be a case of extending the farm even further and applying unbreaking to each of the sets of shears we were using. But of course, shears cannot natively be enchanted in an enchantment table. We would need to have unbreaking books in order to do that, and it seems like a bit of a waste of unbreaking books to use them all on shears, even if we can trade them with villagers, because we're going to need several sets of shears for this. And in order to make the farm a little bit longer, we would have to have unbreaking shears to make sure that they wouldn't break halfway through collecting all of these vines. But with the vast majority of the farm pretty much complete at this stage, all we need to do is work on the mechanism that's going to give us a fresh set of shears, and by the time we've finished that, all of these vines should be grown and the farm should be ready for a test run. So since the player is facing this way as they exit the main vine gathering part of the farm, we're actually going to have to build the mechanism facing in this direction as well. And what's going to happen is the player is going to travel into the range of an item frame that they're going to be looking at at least one block away over here, like so. In front of that is going to be a hopper. Let me just get rid of the rest of this junk around here. Actually, let's let's grab some more of these vines because, of course, we're going to be gathering those anyway. So holding our chicken in one hand and our shears in the other hand, we're going to have both left and right click held down. And this actually, when the water streams put us in range of the item frame here, place the shears in the item frame and rotate them a little bit. The key to this is that comparators can actually read out a redstone signal based on the position of an item in an item frame. So for a start, we can check whether there is an item in the item frame to begin with, which will activate the comparator for a redstone signal strength of one, and then twisting the item in the item frame from there will actually increase the length of the redstone signal. We don't actually need to use that feature, but it could be useful if you want to do a couple of other things with this later on. Instead, what I'm going to do is play a block next to the comparator which will be strongly powered by the comparator output and a dot of redstone dust a block below it like so and we're actually going to have this run along here and probably just boost the signal using a repeater so let me grab a repeater from our box here we'll just pop that down right there and that's going to detect the signal from this block and the redstone dust on top of it powering it that's going to run underneath this little row here it's going to hit this block and that block is actually going to have a dropper next to it it is at this point that we have to make sure it is a dropper and not a dispenser because dispensers and shears actually have an interaction that was added in to allow sheep shearing to be automated but unfortunately means dispensers cannot dispense shears as an item anymore they will just try and use the shears so we need to use the dropper for this by placing the dropper facing up behind this block here that's actually going to be able to dispense a fresh set of shears for us and i'll craft a couple more here just so we can have those handy and I'll show you how this whole deal works. If we link up the redstone to that block there, that's going to power that block next to the dropper, which should also power the dropper, meaning that as we come through here, if I place some shears in this item frame, they're immediately going to be replaced with a set of shears from this dropper, regardless of the orientation of the shears in the item frame. Even right there in its default position, this is still outputting a redstone signal of one, which is enough to be detected by this redstone repeater. Alternatively, you could have this triggered by the pressure plate and have the pressure plate dispense 
uh, a new set of shears for you as you go back around, but I'm fine doing it this way and I think it's kind of a neat use of the item frame mechanic. For this next section we are going to need a dispenser and we'll also need a few snowballs. We'll grab a few from here for example and then I can always farm up a few more from snow golems or I'll probably have a few others around the world here and there as well. <laughs> could head to a snow biome or take some off these mountains if we need to, but the snowballs here are actually going to perform quite a vital function. Because as the player moves away with a brand new set of shears in hand, we want a dispenser to fire a snowball at this item frame, and that will actually eject the item in the item frame from the frame itself, allowing us to collect it in a hopper placed in front. Let me quickly demonstrate this with some snowballs, and I'll throw together a quick oak button to show you. So if I place that there, and now we fire, a snowball at the item frame, you'll notice that the item disappears and is immediately collected into the hopper to be placed in this chest. And once we travel a little bit further along the water stream here, we're going to run over another pressure plate that's going to activate this dispenser after the player has gone. So the snowball doesn't just hit the back of your head, it will always hit the item frame. And that's also where we could trigger the dropper so that it dispensed another set of shears for us if we wanted to, but I kind of like once again having the item frame be part of the mechanics here. And that's going to allow these shears to be collected in the chest here and potentially fixed if you wanted to repair them using mending or if you just wanted to collect a bunch of shears to make sure that they hadn't all broken in the process of using the farm. So it's very simple to add in the dispenser snowball circuit. All we've really needed to do is run a redstone wire out from the bottom of this blue ice block where the player is going to be traveling over a pressure plate that's separating out the water streams. That pressure plate is going to activate this redstone dust. I put a stair in here to make sure the signal is not blocked as it goes up a step and that should very easily trigger this snowball dispenser. So we'll try that one more time. I'll put the shears back in here as a test like so. All I need to do is travel over this pressure plate here. We should see the snowball fire and there we go. The shears get taken out of the item frame and should have ended up in this chest right here, perfect, collected and ready to be repaired if we want to do that. One of the remaining stages here and the reason I decided that we should bring a barrel to this is that if we place a hopper facing into that dispenser there, which can really go in from any angle, but I think I'm going to put it there, we can put a barrel over top of it like so. We'll put a barrel right here and that's going to allow us to put in any fresh sets of shears that we want to load this mechanism up with. And obviously we could set up a near infinite amount of storage for this so that it would always have fresh sets of shears for us. In fact, let me go ahead and craft a few more sets of shears that we can just put in the barrel right now. All of those will end up going down into the mechanism and oh, I've just taken the uh, item frame off the block there. That's just going to allow all of those to be preloaded into the dropper on this corner and the dropper is simply going to provide us with a fresh set of shears each time. As you can see, uh, if I take the stone brick block out there that got put in the hopper after that, we got a bunch of shears ready to go every time we do a circuit of the farm. Okay, right, one, one last change we need to make, and I'm actually quite glad I caught this before we started the farm, is actually to change the pressure plate that's activating the snowballs for a stone one, because stone pressure plates cannot be activated by items only by players, which is going to be pretty useful since we will actually find a few items zipping around this farm and we haven't set up a collection mechanism for those yet. What I'm thinking is we'll just allow the water streams to collect them in the player's inventory for now, but it would be simple enough to just add a kind of overflow hopper system over here to make sure that all of the vines as we harvest the farm multiple times will just end up going into a storage chest over here. So just having a hopper underneath one of the water streams is going to be simple enough for that, but I just want to make sure that the farm works pretty well first. Having this pressure plate here be stone instead of wood just means that the vines traveling around the farm won't set off this dispenser and cause the item frame to be popped off the wall there because that would kind of ruin the mechanism for us. But I think now we have everything set up here. We are as good to go as we will ever be. I just need to fill in one last water source here to complete our circuit of water streams. And I did just sleep, so we've got plenty of time left in the day. Those pillagers have despawned, so now I think seems like the perfect time to get started with this. Once again, we're going to hold down left and right click the entire time to make sure that we end up eating as we go and make sure that our hunger is full by the time we get to that item frame so that we can deposit this set of shears. But right now, it looks like the farm is working pretty well. As the vines grow over the same block, you'll actually find that both of them on both sides of the block get harvested at once, but if one side can grow while the other doesn't, that still means you end up with a harvest 
on that block, which is going to make this vine farm pretty effective overall. Now, once we get around to the end of the farm, we'll be able to see how our shears have fared and how the durability is going to go, but I think for the most part we should be good here. And you can already hear the clicking of the vines traveling around in the water streams, which is why I'm happy that I swapped out that wooden pressure plate at the end for a stone one. In fact, you might want to have stone pressure plates throughout this entire farm if you would prefer it to be less clicky than this, but you probably just want to turn down your game sounds if you're AFKing on this farm anyway. I guess it's also worth noting that my inventory is pretty full for this, and we did start the farm with a set of shears that was on lower than max durability, so we might see us running a little bit low on durability here, but we didn't harvest every single block of vines in the farm because not everyone had grown all the way, so that's okay. I think I'm actually going to hit this tree, which is another reason we probably want to have a solid wall of blocks in here. Yeah, we're going to get a couple of vines sheared off of that. We come around to the collection mechanism. The shears get popped in there. We should get another set of shears, and those do not seem to have activated, and I wonder why that was. Oh, it looks like one of our pieces of redstone dust actually got washed away, so that's kind of unfortunate. So that section of the farm didn't work, but it should be, and as we can see, our shears with 13 durability left have wound up in the chest, and that should work out pretty well. I also don't have a great deal of room in my inventory, so I'm going to drop a bunch of stuff off in here for the time being. There we go, make a little bit more space in the inventory, and then we should be able to go around the farm properly, collecting all of the vines as we go. You'll notice I've started to dip a little bit in hunger, so I'm making sure that we can top that up by holding down left and right click once again, and... You'll notice a few of the vines that we sheared the first time around have lingered on these blocks, but as long as we make our way around to those before the five minute despawn timer, we should be okay and we should be able to collect everything this farm has dropped. I think the main reason I didn't collect them the first time around was that my inventory was still a little bit full. You'll notice that we've used up way less durability on the shears this time, and that's basically down to the fact that most of these vines had not fully grown back by the time we passed around them. We did get a decent harvest of vines though, and we'll be seeing the fruits of that in just a second. And of course, if you wanted to, you could always make the return water stream that returns you to the beginning of the farm. There we go, the changeover just happened. We got a fresh set of shears and our old set of shears is deposited in that chest. We could always make this return water shoot here a little bit longer to give these vines a little bit more time to grow. But as you'll see, a decent proportion of the vines in the farm have now grown back, meaning that it's going to be nice and easy to collect another set of vines on the next go around. And just look at the yield from a couple of runs through the farm. We already have four stacks of vines. Once again, this whole farm could be expanded if you want to add unbreaking and mending to the shears and repair them once you've got them fully enchanted. That would be a really great idea. I think also what I might end up doing is having a vine collection mechanism right here, just a hopper going into a chest out the side here, and that's going to collect anything that goes around the system because the clicking of those pressure plates is getting a little bit annoying and my inventory might end up filling up if I come into it with an inventory as full as the one I've got right now. So I think, all in all, this is a pretty successful vine farm, creepers notwithstanding, and the last thing we need to do is make sure that there's a nice building around the outside of it to make sure it's fully protected and AFKable. But the shears left over with a decent amount of durability in here could always end up getting combined. We could end up combining these in our inventory or in a grindstone to increase the durability and then they could be put back into the system for later allowing you to harvest even more vines as you go around. So I think as far as vine farms go this is a pretty successful design. Once again big shout out to Nembon who designed the ice farm mechanics that this is based on. The collection mechanism and everything there works pretty flawlessly I think and I'm really happy with this design. Thanks so much for watching the Minecraft survival guide. My name has been Pixorifs. Please don't forget to leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more and I'll see See you guys soon. Take care. Bye for now.